and you have just crossed the line. End of debate. Report to the cargo bay and remain there until this is over. Is that understood? And we are recording, transmitting from the Alpha Quadrant about the Delta Quadrant. Working, <laughs> working. Are we working? <laughs> Honey, we're working it. Are we though? We're trying. Oh. Honey, we're 30 seconds in. How fierce, how bad can it be? Oh. <laughs> Click. <laughs> Right. I didn't break out the key light today because like, I, I actually think the, the Gutis is sitting and yeah. I don't need it. And again, as I pointed out, this is an audio podcast. Right. It is an audio podcast. Primarily. So they can't see my, my, my fabulous uh, uh, United Federation of Planets No, they t-shirt. can't see it, bitch. But it's so fierce. So the pre-record conversation we had meant nothing to you. Not a thing. Good, because we also said that Miss Booby was going to lead this episode, and we have not even let her speak. That's all right, though. That's all right, though, because I ain't enjoying you speaking. That's not class. That's not class. That's not class. That's not all right, though. Okay, Miss Booby, we're going to stop bulldozing and let Miss Booby take it from here. Yes. Well, you're listening to Welcome to Fire Chicote, the fiercest podcast of Star Trek Voyager in this quadrant. Yes, you do Thank sound you. like a droid. Thank yes. you very much. Here's and another sh- question. Are and you our using- show is now called Welcome to Fire Chicote. Welcome. Miss Thing, are you using a microphone, Miss Booby? Yes. Because this is an audio podcast. <laughs> yes, I have a microphone. <laughs> oh, I'm Mike Diamond. This is Miss Matinga. And of course, this is Booby. Of course it is, darling. Remember, the, on the last show that we did, you asked Booby to lower his mic. Maybe he needs to raise it up again. Raise it up. Ms. Booby, can you raise your, your audio? And while you do that, Matinga will describe something that the listeners can't see. You know what? I'll describe something the listeners can't see. Miss Matinga, because don't nobody see her. This morning, I gave birth to a tribble. It was round and furry. It, I hope it was a tribble. That is vile. Did you know that there's a gay tribble called Trixie? Did you know this? What? Is it a tribble? Is it purple yeah. or lavender? I don't know, but so you know Dan Deavy, our friend from Gays in Space. Yes. He and his partner adopted a dog and they were looking for a name for it. I had suggested Jadzia. I was I completely I was completely ignored. But they settled on Trixie. And then I said, Why Trixie? Please God, not Trixie Mattel. And right. it was because there's Trixie the gay tribble. Ah. Oh, really? Yes. But that's neither here nor there. Booby, take it away. Okay, so how did this episode start? This episode starts And what with, episode is it, girl? Uh, this episode is called Pray. That's why we pray. Pray. <laughs> pray. <laughs> Matinga, do you have information on this, this episode's debut? For the very first time, y'all, oh. I forgot oh. to look up which okay. episode it is. It's I know- season four, episode... <laughs> It was filmed on 1990 and first aired on 1990. And we can, we can add that. You know what? I, no, we ain't going to add it. I just looked at my notes. I, I, I totally forgot. I'm so sorry. You've got yeah, notes. I say we do add it just as an interstitial if we, because that is important to the, to the fandom. It is. You know what? You splice it in, sweetheart. Because there's only so many hours in a day. <laughs> Beyond Star Trek Shade. That's, <laughs> that's why we like pray. Shade. We're not going to mention the D word, darling. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, well, it's listen. It's season. It's a season four episode. Yeah. And hopefully, Michael will be professional enough to to at least put it in the notes. Let me tell you what's professional, okay? I don't make promises that I don't keep, bitch. And I didn't ever say I was taking no notes. And I'm not the one to be spilling the day of production and air dates, okay? John Davenport's taking notes. Right Right out out in class. class. Right out in class. He's been eating a (laughs) meatball sandwich. I was not. I won't eat it. Okay. From the looks of you, Miss Davenport. You never stop eating. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got a so knife good. in my pocket. I'm gonna cut you up cut after you class. After class. <laughs> cut you after class. Um, Haven't you said that to somebody? You know what? <laughs> Every time I watch it, I'm like, those are the girls I hung out with. Those are the girls <laughs> I was. Girl, you were one of those girls. I really was. You were literally one of those girls. Just because we're pretty, everyone's jealous. <laughs> jealous. It's true. But we are talking about Star Trek Voyager season four episode Prey. And we're not right. going to pray the gay away. We're going to pray the gay to stay. 
That's so right. the episode opens with the Herogen. Who be the Herogen girl? The Herogen are a hunting species of alien mm -hmm. that wear exo armor a lot of exo armor and they are very similar to predator in that they when they hunt their prey they then keep the skulls and uh as trophies or they keep trophies of their prey they keep trophies it's and all about the hunt their whole reason for being is the hunt is the hunt God, yes. right. right my entire uh reason of being is all about the oh maybe that would be inappropriate i'm sorry let's, let's just move on were you going to say the blunt? <laughs> no, no. I, I know. Stunt. I was, I was going to say, uh, let's let bury Sesame Street. Cuh. Cunt. Cunt. Dun, 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 dun. So, one, one little piece of trivia that I do have to throw in there is that your penis. The, the uh, little <laughs> enough. Trust. Talk about just a little piece of, of trivia. Of, of, of pro right like, what is this trivia? What is this trivia here? <laughs> this trivia doll. Yeah. I didn't want to write trivial <laughs> pursuit. Put your pants up. Talk about trivial pursuits. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> and he's hairy. It's trivial hair suit. <laughs> it's trivial hair suit. Actually, I have a, an ex of mine was in a band called Hair Suit. Pursuits, because oh. uh, it was a bear band. Oh. But um, what I was going to say is just real quick, though, is that the lead Herogen warrior, yes, is Tony Todd. Yes, from the Tony Todd from, from the Candy one, Man. Wait, wait, wait! Don't say it. From the remix Candy of Man. Bang, a Bang, Bang, a Bang, Bango. No, Candy that's Man. Terry Todd. Oh, oh from okay. The, from, Who are we talking about? He's from Candyman, but we can't. If you say it too many times in a row, Candyman shows up. So, okay, so it's not the so it's not the remixer guy. No, no. And Tony Todd is uh, Todd like Terry. he. Oh, oh that's Terry. that's Todd, Todd Terry. Terry. Yes. Todd Terry. Yeah. And uh, he, uh, Miss Tony Todd, is famous because he's done so many horror films. Mm -hmm. Like he is a horror film star. Word. Yeah. And he's quite wonderful here. And I love his remixes. So he's playing a Herogen. Yes. yes. And him and another Herogen are on a hunt for some kind of prey. Whose name? Right. Did we get his name? The Herogen? Yeah. They just call him the Herogen. I think they, they never say his name at any point. Because mm. if you say it three so. times, he'll show up. Trust. Mm. So Trust, what honey. happens? Can you, can you talk amongst yourselves while I get a mint? Absolutely. I mean, not that we can tell from here. Oh my God, I could totally Girl, tell. Girl, her breath here. was kicking. What, uh, honey? Bang, a bang, bang, so, a bang, bang. Should I grab? Should I grab my phone and get the, the, the stats? No, bitch. No. Nope. Okay. okay. We ain't creating extra work for me. It makes me feel empty and sad. You are empty and sad, and I don't want to create more work for me. <laughs> oh God. Miss okay. Well, thing. the next time is this is terrible. Have people written in saying, I need to know the air date. I say, anything, it will now. anything they can Google themselves, let them do it. You teach a man to fish, he eats for life. You give a man a fish, he has bad breath. Hello, Booby, speaking of, welcome Miss back. Booby. And diarrhea. Ugh. <laughs> All right, so what happens now? These reptile things are hunting around. Yes. Right. Miss Booby. <laughs> oh, okay. So they're hunting uh, a species called 8472. That's the name that we are given. We don't know what their real name is. Right. right. And um, they chase it into an asteroid field. And uh, one of them says it's not, they're not trying to, to, to hide. They're, they're, they're taking their final stand or something like that. Okay. Uh, so they're hiding in an asteroid field. That's the last that we see of them. Then we pan to Starship Voyager. And Seven of Nine is getting, um, uh, what kind of lessons are they? It's like lessons. Lesson. Oh, it's so funny. Lessons the doctor, which is hysterical. And it's She's so funny. funny. She's not having it. I'm sorry, did that hurt? I'll try to be more careful. Thanks for being a patient patient. Have a pleasant afternoon. This is absurd. Excuse me, nurse. This is the wrong hypospray. Would you mind finding the correct one? Not at all. Thank you. Did I mention you look lovely today? Oh, doctor, you're so charming. This lesson is terminated. She is so shady. <laughs> right. And the doctor, like the doctor, like he loves her, like he, I think he has an affection for her. Oh, um, yeah. But he's so cornball. 
Like it's cornball. Well, all of her little pleasantries coming out of her mouth of that sardonic, dry, disinterested <laughs> breed. She's yeah. like, this is absolutely stupid. Lesson is terminated. This is insipid. Insipid, yes. darling. So she's like, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. Uh, no, she says she's out. And then he says, well, you know, listen, you're trying to assimilate into the crew and like get people to warm up and to she's you. she's like, blah, blah, blah. assimilate this motherfucker. But she does warm up a little bit. She says, I, you know, I will look over your material. Right, right. But you know that she like takes that data pad and throws it across the deck the moment she walks out of sick bay. Because niceties are irrelevant. She's not having it. So, but while they're in sick bay, they spook a ship in space with an injured Herogen. And Miss Seven on the bridge being aggressive and yep. back talking the captain, being very like, the, you know, like, honey, that's the bridge. And like, Miss Ka Captain. And Miss Kathy, she is tolerating it. <laughs> well, she's tolerating it. But there's a little backstory because the Herogen gave Voyager a lot of drama in some episodes we didn't talk about. Right. So Seven is like, do not help this motherfucker, blow him up, or let's keep going, let's dash, let's not Pay take this no risk. Mind. Pay them no mind. So yeah, the Herogen sip is damaged. The, you know, it is basically drifting at this point. And Seven is like, fuck it, let's blow this ship up. Mm. And the captain is like, this is an opportunity for diplomacy. Mm -hmm. and, She's compassion. Like, and, and compassion and learning from your enemy. And Seven is like, the, the, the Borg have learned that the Herogen are this and that, and it's a no. She's I don't, like, I don't think, so. think so. I don't think <laughs> so. Yeah. But, you and know, so, Kathy gonna Kathy. But Miss Kathy gonna Kathy it up. And the Herogen dude ends up on... Voyager in sick bay, severely injured by eight four seven two, which we don't know. It's eight four seven two yet. Or but don't we, we see it, we see it like crawling outside of Voyager on outside top of the ship? Of Voyager, yeah. Beautiful shot. Yeah. yeah, beautiful shot. But no, we know, but they fun. don't know. They don't. The Voyager know. doesn't know. So then they go to talk to Todd Terry Herogen in sick bay, and Kathy's like, "Look, <laughs> I don't know what she says." <laughs> She's like, you know, la, 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 la. What is your prey? That's why we pray. <laughs> You're la, being la, la, shady. La, 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 la. I don't want to hear it. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. trying to be friends with y'all. Right. Y'all oh. being shady. Todd Terry's like, look, bitch. Bango, bo, bango, bango. <laughs> you know, I will say. What is you talking about? I will say this about Miss Kathy or Miss Mulgrew. In this episode in particular. Tough. Tough. tough she like she is real angry yeah, yeah. and the very, short hair is working for it a, and yeah. a very like a very stern walk right walking right. very sternly around the she, ship you know what they should call this episode end. miss captain janeway just ain't having it she's not having anybody's bullshit right yeah so she's not she, in a bad mood no but she's, she's just like stern she's stern but then, but then the doctor also has a cute moment, though, when, you know, the, the Herogen will not allow himself to be examined, but he is quite injured. So she, the, the, the captain with a little bit of diplomacy and, you know, and a little bit of pecan pie hmm. uh, convinces him to let the doctor examine him. And so before the doctor enters the force field, he says, just to let you know, I am a hologram and I cannot be bent, spindled or mutilated. So just don't even try. That's what my and grinder profile says. Trust. Mm. But it's just the way, it's just like, just always wonderful comedy beats from Picardo. Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. just so good. Mm -hmm. So they start doing this pap smear on the Herogen. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, the ships start to attack Voyager. No. Uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the species 8472 uh, breaks into the ship. Right, right. And then they figure out that they have been boarded, and then they figure out that it's species 8417, 8472, that that is the prey. Right. right. And, they, and then it turns into this battle through the Jeffries tubes and the hallways to subdue, you know. 8472. And this prey, this is some fucking resilient prey. Species 8472 through. Two through. He is 8472 two through. through, girl. He is two through, and he's... And also, he's gravely injured, eight, the species 847 
Eight but he had seven. killed one of the Hirogen earlier, and the Hirogen right. on Voyager is the only surviving one from that hunting party. From that hunting party. But there are more Hirogen on the way. Did Coming. you catch um, how Miss Roxanne Biggs is pregnant? Yes. During the I caught it like yes. instantly. She's wearing like the sort of like flared out tunic smock thing, and they're like yeah. all these shots, like not with her belly in it. How many times oh, have been pregnant in the filming of this? Series. I think only know. once, and then she was fake pregnant at the end. Right. right. But right. the funny thing is, they 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 like they always have her like in front of a computer console, or like turning towards the console. You know, she's like, or like she's like, she'll answer, or right. like she'll she'll turn to she'll answer some question like this. Right. Which the audio listeners can't see, but she just turns her head. She turns right. her head like all the way back, so you don't see her body. Or like in sick bay, they only show her face. You know, just like on the, the on the on the on the sick bed on the With bio bed. Chin. Yes, and oh, mama. <laughs> just and then also one more thing. So you know, uh, the, they're taking this very seriously because species eight four seven two is you know resilient prey, and so they're getting the ship ready for battle. And then there's another moment in engineering where Balana and Seven are getting everything ready, mm. and uh, so uh, you know Balana's giving her orders, and then this ensign like comes into the frame. ensign cutie pie. Ensign Cutie Pie down! Bitch. That Ensign was much cuter than Ensign Ayala. Who also is in this somewhere looking hot. Now, yeah. there's a bunch Toby, of little... did you notice him? I did. He was cute. There's a couple of cuties in the background this episode. Yeah, I was like, oh, Ensign Cutie Pie. And in point of fact, Miss Tom Paris had his hair's a little bit grown out in this episode. I noticed that. Isn't he looking yeah. adorable? Adorable. I just want to run my fingers through his hair. And it's got, it's gone from blonde to kind of like a sandy brown. And the hair on his head. To auburn brown. Yeah. To like yes. an auburn, yeah. But cute, definitely cute. It's very autumn leaves. I just want to roll around in some crinkly dry autumn leaves with him, like laughingly in slow motion and then kiss. Oh, autumn leaves just makes, <laughs> reminds me of Nat King Cole. <laughs> autumn leaves <laughs> make me feel fine. Blowing through the chasm in my... If you had a chasm in your mind, you should probably see a doctor. Is that how the Thank lyrics you. go, though? I don't need two chasms. Oh, trust, bitch. Trust. Hi. Okay, so this is the situation on Voyager. Kathy's in a bad mood. Seven is on high alert. Yes. Species 8472 is on Voyager, causing drama, disabling gravity, and deflector controls. The Herogen is in sick bay, itching for the hunt. That's yes. where we're at. Right. Yes. So then Chicote and Tom and Tubok and Seven put on big astronaut suits with because gravity. Because the environmental systems are out. Right, yes. to go find Species 8472, who they don't know is a species. Can we think of a nickname for 8472? Tutru. 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 How about, how, about, how about Kiki? So Kiki, Kiki they go looking for Kiki. Kiki. Miss Kiki is so through. I like the effect <laughs> with the with the gravity boots clomping the sound effect. Yeah. And also their little outfits with the helmets mm -hmm. look really cute. Yeah. It's and nice, nice, nice production. Seven kind of aims at something yeah. in the hallway to shoot it, and Tubak is like, you missed. And it was only a it was only a data pad. Right. But the way he says it is so shady. You missed. Since species 8472 invaded the ship, you've become increasingly agitated. They were the only species to offer true resistance to the Borg. I have reason to be agitated. She's you have spooked. seemed agitated. And she's like, yeah, these, this species, Kiki species will mess you up. And Borg killed... have been trying to get them for a while now. Mm -hmm. But also killed hundreds of millions of Borg. Right. Planets, right. hundreds of planets. Yeah, so she has reason to fear. Now, at what point does Janeway allow the Herogen to join the hunt? And for what reason? Why? For what, for what reason? reason? <laughs> oh, because she thinks that if she lets Todd Terry go hunt for the prey, he'll tell the approaching Herogen ships to lay off. off. Lies. Lies. Okay. Lies. But, that, but that's what she thinks. But that's what she I thinks. And meanwhile, Todd Terry's like, nah, I'm just going to kill it. I'm going to kill it, and then I'm going to kill them. Right, because Janeway's like incapacitated, don't kill it, so on and so forth. So what? And, is, and even, even uh, Seven is like, nah, we got to kill it. Nah, we're going to kill it. Yeah. We're going to kill it. So Seven and the Herogen are like, nah, we're going to kill it. Who? Wait, when, does, when does Seven's nanoprobes come into play? Right around here, 
when she's like, nah, we got to kill it. And then the captain is like, I want you to take the nanoprobes and, and make them a little bit weaker. And she's like, that is unsound uh, 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 commands, blah, blah, blah. And Miss Seven is like being aggressive and like, and saying no to her. Yeah. I was like, honey. Because the board- The entire episode. The entire episode. Well, you know, the whole episode is really more about Janeway and Seven than about either alien Anybody species. Else. It's right. becoming the Janeway Seven show. So yeah. the, the nanoprobes would incapacitate Kiki 8472, but not kill her. But Seven's like, nah, I want to kill her. And Jane right. like, give us the nanoprobes. And Seven's like, no, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. And gets sent to her room. Uh, no, she gets sent to her room because the they- cargo bay. Th To the cargo bay, because finally they do, uh, find the uh, Kiki A472 mm -hmm. pretty pretty much incapacitated in uh, on deck 10 somewhere. And it is so injured and- And, it, and so CGI. And so CGI. And it, it, it speaks to Tuvok, who is probably one of only two telepaths left on board would be Tuvok and Ensign mm -hmm. Boric. Right. And so it speaks to, and, and so Tuvok says to the captain, this thing, it just wants to go home. It's been pursued e. for months. E.T. E. wants to go home. Mm. And oh. so the captain says, okay, we're going to open up a quantum singularity and send this, you know, Miss Kiki home. Oh, that's what happens, right. We're going we're to put Miss Kiki in a cab and send her home. She got right. too messed up at the club, at Club Illusion. Phone home, yes. And we're going to send Miss Kiki home. And so then she goes to Miss Seven and, you know, and like has like this very, cause she knows that Seven wants to destroy the creature. And she has this very emotional talk with Seven heartfelt. about- Very heartfelt about having compassion and saving your enemy. And she tells the story about crawling through a field of battle and saving a Cardassian. And, you know, and, and just like, and that's what Starfleet is. Like having, you know, having co compassion. And then she says, Seven, I want you to open up a singularity. And Seven says, no. no I don't think I don't think so. <laughs> no. Your decision is tactically unsound. And, uh, it's a gag. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's a gag. she, she, she uh, You could, you could almost see compassion coming. You know, coming to seven <laughs> until she opens her mouth and she's like, "No." And I'm so glad that she said that because you know she has a right to her feelings, she and like, like you can't order someone to give up a part of their body. The thing is that. It, on a on a starship with a command structure, you gotta fall in line. Well, the but if, individuality only goes so far. Well, if the captain said, you know, Ensign Matenga, come up from the lower decks where you've been toiling and give us some of your kidney juice right now. Is it gonna kill me? No. Is was it gonna kill seven? No. Would you do what? it? Absolutely. I would do it. I, it won't get you a promotion. Oh, yeah, but at least I get out of the lower decks. Shit. Also, I do want to say that I had such a kiki moment when I realized that the tagline for Fire Chakotay, she mm -hmm. utters in this episode. And you have just crossed the line. End of debate. Report to the cargo bay and remain there until this is over. Is that understood? I was Report like, oh cargo shit. Bay. It's from this episode. Yes, it is. And, that, and every single episode of Fire Chakotay opens with this particular line. So mm -hmm. I just, I got a kiki out of that. Yes, I like that. I like that line reading. It's particularly crisp on Miss Kate Mulgrew's part. Yeah. And End that's the debate. And that's when, that's when right after Miss Seven says, no, I don't think so to her. And then Jamie is like, go to your room, AKA yeah. the cargo bay. And that's, you cross the line or right. something like that. You snorted my line. End of <laughs> debate. No other person on that ship would dare come speak to her that way. At would one time, Bolana would have. At one time, but mm -hmm. but but Miss Bolana learned. She, 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 she got, got learned. Check. Yeah, she got learned. She got learned. So Seven is off in the cargo bay in her Frankenstein contraption, and this is when the Herogen goes with Chakote and the rest of the crew. And he ends up, the Herodian ends up shooting Species 8472 and then Tuvok trying shoots him. Trying to kill it, trying and to then kill Tuvok it. Tuvok shoots him. No, it's, no. Seven, it's seven of nine. No, no. No, you're right, Tuvok does shoot him. Yeah, 
Todd Terry, the Herogen, shoots species 8472 through, and then Tuvok shoots the Herogen because Tom is useless with a phaser. And he knocks Chakotay. And he knocks Chakotay, right. Yes. And, and oh. Chakotay has a lovely moment in the hallway where the Herogen keeps trying to take point, mm. and, Chakotay, and Chakotay gets in front of him and says, like, I'm leading this hunting party. I said maintain your position. This is my hunt. I'm at point. My knowledge of this prey is superior to yours. But you're on unfamiliar terrain. I know this ship. You don't. The prey will likely attack the man at point. You would not survive. I'll take that chance. I had to laugh, though, because the Herogen looked at him like, fool, please. Fool, please. And then, so then the Herogen moves one back, and Miss Tom, you know, it, you know, is expected to move, and Tom is like, Oh, I guess I'll take the back, fine. And I'm like thinking, Tom, yes, you could take the rear. I'll take the rear, exactly. (laughs) And you notice Tom, Tom waits about five seconds. Like he truly takes up the rear. Like he's like, go ahead guys. Take it up, honey, after we roll around those crinkly autumn leaves, baby. And I'll give you my (laughs) pumpkin spice latte. Oh, you're pumped something. (laughs) (laughs) Huzzy, please, show some respect. Yes. Okay. So, Hakuna Matata beach. Hakuna Matata beach. <laughs> Buzz it, please. <laughs> and so, the Herogen ships are fast approaching. It's like five or six of them or something. Yeah. Janeway's like, oh, damn. Kiki is injured. We're trying to get her home. She don't feel good. She's, she, at one point, Kiki passes out. Right. Down. She just falls into a nod. Yeah. And uh, Seven's not helping. So, seven is not helping. Insubordination. Yes. How does the Herogen get out of sick bay? Something happens with the power. The power goes out, knocking down the force field. Was it because the Herogens were firing on them? Yes. Okay. And the and the and Todd Terry overpowers security and grabs one of their guns. Mm-hmm. Goes a, a hunting. A hunting for husband. A hunting for the husband. Mm-hmm. And uh, gets into a tussle with A four seven two. They're rolling around and fighting. And Seven takes it upon herself to unscrew the wall uh, conduits conduits, and transports them, the tussling duo, to the Herogen ship. Yes. At, thereby at, sentencing 8472 to death. And all the Herogens zoop, 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 disappear. Disappear. Off into space with species eight four seven two on one of their ships, and they've disabled the warp warp of uh, of Voyager, so they can't taste them. Yeah, and Janeway is too through plucked. plucked. It is a direct disobey uh, uh, disobeying of orders, and also, like Booby says, you she sent a sentient being to its death. Mm -hmm. It's really, it was quite a choice. But in her mind, species 8472 is such a threat to her own existence and that of the crew that she was like, fuck it. I'm going to do this. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm I'm going to save our skins, Kathy. And she does. She did. Yeah. And, you know, we feel bad for Species 8472 because it's an injured little alien creature oh, alone oh. on a ship. That's a murderous beast. Yeah, it's a murderous beast that killed millions of life forms. Right. So, you know, um, they. So then it didn't start the fight originally. It didn't. It didn't. It got, tr- it got left behind in the, du- in the Delta Quadrant. It got <laughs> left behind in the Delta Quadrant after that whole incursion a few months ago when all the other ships went back to fluidic space. It got left behind somehow. Correct. And has been hunted and tortured by the Herogen ever since. For months. Right, right. Like a long time. So, but the meat of this episode, for like a long time, the meat of this episode is Oh my God, that's my new drag name. Miss Flaka Long Time. Flaka Long Time. Hi. Flaka Long Time. She's real skinny and she lasts forever. Yes. (laughs) The meat of this episode comes in the closing scene in Seven's Cargo Bay holding area. She is asleep in her Frankenstein contraption and Janeway walks in all mad. She wakes her up, you know, and, uh, and says, step down. Like, not even like, please, like, you know, like, step down. Right. And what does she say, Matinga? So she, you know, she's, they go over it again. You 
sentenced a sentient life form to its death. You disobeyed orders. I ordered you to create a quantum singularity. You didn't do it. She dresses her down. She's like, your actions have consequences. Your actions have consequences. She dresses her down and, you know, and then- And cuts off her privileges? Cuts off her privileges. She is not allowed to access any main computer systems. She can only assist in astrometrics. Mm. If she doesn't want to, she can hang out in the cargo bay and not do anything or go anywhere. I didn't come here to debate your decision. I came here to inform you of the consequences. From this point forward, you will no longer have access to any primary systems on this ship, not without my direct authorization. If you attempt to circumvent me, I'll throw you in the brig. I actually think that Kathy took it a little light on her, to be honest, really, because Explain. because if they were like, say, on the other side of the universe, you know, nearer to Starfleet, honey, she would have been sent to a prison camp. You yeah, but sent, you sent into life form to die. Yeah, but they're but they're you know they're far from home, and she needs seven. And she needs her. So maybe she's treading she lightly. Her. And you know she and seven says to her, you know, you want me to be an individual, but and assert my individuality. But then when I make a choice, you don't like that. You made me into an individual. You encourage me to stop thinking like a member of the collective, to cultivate my independence and my humanity. But when I try to assert that independence, I am punished. Individuality has its limits, especially on a starship where there's a command structure. I believe that you are punishing me because I do not think the way that you do, because I am not becoming more like you. Claim to respect my individuality. But in fact, you are frightened by it. And Miss Kathy marches out and says, as you were. Like, as you were. As you were. But you know what? I think Seven has the more valid point. She's like, I'm an individual, but not the individual that you wanted me to be. You're angry that I'm not more like you, bitch. And also, she's not a Starfleet officer. Officer. Right. So she can't be demoted. Right. But the thing is, you got to follow the rules. And if you're not willing to follow the rules, mm-hmm. you can't throw a wrench mm-hmm. in the fucking plans. Like, it was wrong of her. It, it was wrong. And, you know, she's so early in her development. Are those Jolly Ranchers? Jelly Babies. Oh, je- oh candy corn. Are those corn. Jelly Babies? I hate candy corn. I oh, hate I do. It. Have you ever had candy corn ice cream? Yes. Isn't there candy like, corn ice cream is really good. Isn't there like a type of candy corn that has more of like a brown hue? There's like brown candy corn. Yeah, they're all old. Oh. What I love about this scene in particular is that it shows that, yes, Seven has blonde hair and she's trying to get into the Starfleet mode, but she really is fresh from the board collective. Yeah. She has no time for this drama and bullshit. She's trying to survive. She's not used to these rules, nor does she necessarily agree with them. Yeah. And she's going to do it her way. That's right. Even if it means going against the, her, the, the rules. Right. Going Isn't against it? the directions, the orders. You know, she, she yeah. has been disobeying Kathy for the last few episodes and basically is like, what about it? What about it? What about it? Yeah. And also, Kathy, you know, sometimes her reasoning is a little weird and flawed as well. It's constantly putting her crew in danger because you know now the Herogen, not only are they aware of Voyager. Voyager, but they are also now their enemies. Right. Yeah, so Kathy also- they did, they did get away with, you know, with, with Kiki. They did get their little prey. They got their they, prize. They got Kiki. Oh, and you know that Kiki ended poorly. Oh, honey, Kiki might still be alive being tortured. Yeah, yeah. The Herogen ain't nice. They ain't nice, girl. They're not nice about them. No. No. Hey, honey, they're like the La Bejas. Nothing nice about them. And honey, they'll keep a skull. Oh, trust. They'll rock stock her. They have like a, a whole, they got a magnifique skull. They got some bones from a Revlon. They keep trophies from the ballroom. You talk about trophies, talk about trophies, honey. That's a ballroom trophy, bitch. What? Ooh. Honey, Pepper La Beja's head on a fucking pike. Anyhow. <laughs> Booby, why did you select this episode? Good choice. I love it. Why did you select this one? Mm-hmm. Excellent episode. Excellent. I love Species 8472. I love the, 
the uh, uh, seven of nine angle of the story. Yeah. I, I like the Hirogen uh, as an as a enemy species. And I had watched this episode not that long ago and loved it. So mm-hmm. I thought it was great. I of course I'd seen it before, but I f- sort of forgot all the different elements of it. Yeah, I forgot how much of it was about Janeway and Seven. Yeah. Very little Neelix. No, little least, little tiny little bit. Tiny. Little, Tuvok asks Neelix to be on a security guard. To be detail. a security guard. Real, he's like, put down your spatula, pick up a gun. But yeah. it's so weird. That scene, it almost feels like it's in a different episode. But that's where it's Tuvok so, gets the telepathic vision. It right. is, but it just, it just, it doesn't, it just doesn't jive with the rest of the episode. It's so weird. It feels like shoehorned in. It feels unnecessary. shoehorned and unnecessary, yeah. Maybe they forgot to add the telepathy angle and sort of film that later in reshoots. Right, right. Just oh, we need one. We need one extra scene explaining this. Because right. doesn't Tuvok communicate with Kiki eight four seven two while Janeway's there, and she's kind yes. of talking to it through Tuvok? He said, yes. "Does he understand? Does he understand pecan pie?" I thought it was a really solid pick, Booby. What's your score for this episode? I give it a solid four. I am going to give it. Also a solid four. Four fire chicotes. Yes, I really thought it was great. I am going to give it three and a half Leola root. Mm-hmm. Really good though. Really good. Solid outing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know what's interesting too is that it's nice for Janeway to be getting some pushback because yeah! the whole like Maquis thing was sort of squashed early. Balana got domesticated pretty quickly. Yeah. You know, no one's giving her fever except Seven now. Right. And you need a little bit of drama. Mm-hmm. Everyone just can't get along. There has to be conflict. There has to be a little conflict in there to give it that frisson. And mm-hmm. that's and that is what the Seven character does. Miss Miss Seven, like her favorite word is no. Right. She'll give you a no in a hot little brown cat suit. And Miss Jerry Ryan, honey, selling it, selling the comedy and the drama. And the drama. So good. Do you know what else is so good? Reading reviews of this very podcast online. I will pull up a review and why don't we read it? Okay. So this is a review from Andy429. And it says, wigs snatched to the 24th century. This podcast worked out my Delta Quadrant lovely. Andy G. Thank you, Andy. Thanks, Andy. So if you guys want to join in on that kind of action, you can rate and review us on the podcast app of your choice. That happened to have been Apple Podcasts. Yeah. And always give us five stars. Please. Please. Yes, absolutely. Look up, please. Look up, please. Yes. And also don't forget that we have merch at our merch store, which is teespring.com slash doors slash workshop. Cute merch, honey. Fire I got Chicote my, merch. Yes, Fire Co- Chicote merch and our other podcast, which is called Homework. Because if you're into our gay fantasy here, you'll be living for our gay fantasy there. And if you'd like to support the content, you can hit us up on Patreon or Venmo. We are Workshop, W-E-R-Q-S-H-O-P. And if you don't know, patrons get first look at all of our content as well, yes. and also exclusive content. That is correct. All right, now with all that business out of the way, who's got some final thoughts? Um... I think that Voyager is, honey, f- season four, hot. Just like season four. Hot, hot, hot. Feeling hot, hot, hot. A song that I do not think is very hot. hot. That's Buster, I love it. Buster, Buster Poindexter? Yeah. Yeah, Buster Poindexter. Would you have done it? Buster Poindexter? Back then. I can't back then, quite, sure. I can't sure. quite picture it in my head. Big. I mean, I could picture the yeah. hair, the weird hair. Right. But I can't quite picture all the other... Wasn't Scrooge? Wasn't Buster Poindexter driver and Scrooge? Wasn't I've, Buster I've never Poindexter? Seen I've never seen Scrooge either. Nope. Yeah, not a Bill Murray fan, and love not, Bill Murray. Not a holiday movie fan, and eh. Now never I do love. I've holiday seen Spooged. Spooged. You have. I bet you were um, starring in it. Is is he? He's from the New York Dolls, right? Buster Poindexter. He's from what? He's from the New York Dolls, right? Buster Poindexter. Yes. You know your mama, the doll. Your mother. Oh, you know what? That lady, reminds me. I got. I got to buy that. Lady Shebley. Miss Lady Shebley. I got to buy that. Miss Booby. Do you know the Lady Shebley? I know who she was. Who she was. So she, you know, she did her book, Hiding My Candy. 
Yes. Right. And she did her audio version, which I had one time on cassette tape, and which now goes on Amazon for like seven hundred dollars. Yeah. What? Bitch, I wish I had kept that thing. Because I laughed so much at hiding my candy. I really? have. I still have a copy of Hiding My Candy. I have the book, mm -hmm. uh, which isn't, you can, you can buy the book on Amazon for like 30 bucks or whatever. But what I love about the book is that um, it was half um, autobiography, half cookbook. Right. Half Southern cookbook. Really? Yeah. Yes. But if you listen to the audio book, it's which so I, funny. it's so funny, but you can actually, it's, her, it's yeah. her, it is her. I could tell by the grinning stares that I might have been a feast of desire for some of those men. Have any of us seen Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil? The no, movie I've, she was in. But I've done something even better. When that book came out and Hedda was hosting a night at Barracuda, bitch, I went in my drags when I was doing like the braids thing. And Hedda had like a bunch of, that's how I got the cassette tape. Hedda had a bunch of copies of the book and the tape from the publisher. It's probably so, how I got my book. Yeah. I sat in the entrance to Barracuda pretending to be Lady Shebley and I signed people's books as Lady Shebley. No. And nobody okay. questioned it. <laughs> that you were a white girl with braids. I don't think they- doing book spice. Well, it was the it was the book of spice look with the braids, but also oh. you know, like it was in the entrance. The lighting was weird. Maybe I was giving you high yellow. <laughs> oh, honey, you're giving me high yellow right now. No, for real though, and I did, and we laughed about it, girl. Afterwards, Head and I laughed. Oh, so that has you, nothing to do with Voyager. So, <laughs> none, so none of us none of us read the none of us saw the movie. Did anyone read the book because she's in the book? Nah. Yeah, I didn't yeah. read the book, but I did see, I did watch the movie. The movie's terrible. Was she's, she in the movie? Yeah, she's in the movie playing herself and she's in the book and the character is based on her and named after her. She's the best thing in the movie. The, well, the best thing. The original title of it was Midnight in the Garden of Good and Fiends. Good and Good and Fiends. Good and Good. Uh, that I've seen. And good and Good. Midnight, good and Good and Midnight in the Garden of Good and Good. Honey. <laughs> well, we have completely strayed from Star Trek Voyager as a topic, but I think the listeners and viewers are okay with that. I will not comply. Objection noted. We'll do this without you. End of debate. <laughs> Report, report to the cargo, to cargo bay. bay. To the cargo bay. Honey, that's what I'm going to say to Tom Paris. Honey, report to my cargo bay immediately. End of debate. Cross this line. Somebody Honey, your candy corns away from me. Your, mm -hmm. car, your cargo bay is certainly cavernous enough to, oh, to suffice. Honey, I am tight and tasty. Neither <laughs> can fit in there. Are you? Oh, how, really? you know, oh you're both going to come for me now. Tight and tasty. That's a good time mm. to end this episode. Thank you for listening to Fire Chicote. I am Mike Diamond. This is Miss Matinga. And this is Booby.